Hi, I'm Jill Duffy here with Max Eddy, and this is PC Mag Live. Today in tech news, the UN has been debating the uh, killer robots, as we're calling them. Yeah, they're, they're actually talking about lethal autonomous weapon system, which could be a lot of different things, not just Terminators, but I'm sure those are on the table as well. They're looking to figure out what exactly an autonomous weapon system is and whether or not it should be governed under existing international law. So the International Committee of the Red Cross has said it has deep discomfort with the idea of allowing machines to make life and death decisions on the battlefield with little, little or no human involvement. So this is a three-day meeting that's been going on starting Tuesday, so today is the last day of that meeting. And the big thing here is that most of, well, all of the systems that they're talking about don't exist yet. The UN is trying to get ahead of technology right now, and it's probably a good thing. Right now, we're, we're debating the moral and ethical dilemmas of being able to kill someone at great distance with the push of a button, and there's a very real possibility that someone won't even need to be on the other end of that button. So we're gonna be, it's going to be very interesting to see what the UN finally decides. In other news, Autodesk is finally getting into hardware with 3D printers. Autodesk is a San Francisco-based company that makes a whole bunch of software, usually for 3D modeling, like AutoCAD. So this will be the first hardware for the company where you can design your products uh, in their software tools and now print them out. And it's going to be an open source printer too. And we haven't seen a whole lot of you know, really groundbreaking stuff coming out of 3D printing, but more and more companies are getting into it. So it shows it's definitely growing in people's interest. Autodesk is also going to have an open source platform uh, with 3D printing called Spark. So that's from Autodesk. Uh, in other game news, we have two pieces of game news today, it's actually. It's a gamey day. It is a gamey day. <laughs> so uh, the big news, of course, is that Sup oh, Mario Kart, I almost said Super Mario Kart, I'm showing my age. Mario Kart, Kart comes out today. It's a really big deal. We have a review up probably right now. And you actually uh, you actually played around with it a little bit. What did you well, think? Well, I didn't play around with it. I, I, read, the, I read the review in <laughs> advance. Um, it, the review will be out today. So it sticks to a lot of the conventions of Mario Kart that everybody's come to know and love. Uh, it has a few new features. We're not going to tell you all of them here, uh, but some things you'll really like. There's a new red horn. I'm not going to tell you what that does. And there's also a new way to combat that blue shell of death. Uh, the scourge of many gamers for many years. And in other gaming news, Flappy Bird is coming back this August as if a birthday present to myself. Uh, the developer is, says that it will be less addictive than the original, which I think will probably play against him in the long run, but he will also be introducing multiplayer. So I have no idea how any of this is going to work, but I, I am excited to find out. Let's back up and just recap. What is Flappy Bird again? Flappy Bird is the hyper-addictive game that was released, uh, I would think it was earlier this year, and then pulled suddenly from the market when the developer felt like he was ruining people's lives and his own life with the uh, incredible coverage that it was receiving. And it was sort of a watershed moment for apps, and now it's coming back. So we'll see what happens. I had my own little video game moment this morning, actually. You did? I was I was riding my bike to work, and there was a banana peel that I had to avoid. So that totally made me think of Mario Kart. And you rammed into a crate immediately afterwards? <laughs> I wish, I wish. Uh, do we have reader questions? We do. Bob asks via email, the Map My Walk and Map My Ride apps give incorrect distance and pace often, even showing activity when I'm not moving. The GPS map is accurate, though. Any ideas how this could happen? Yeah, so this we see a lot. Um, Bob told me he was using an iPhone 4S with the latest operating system, so all pretty good stuff there. Usually what happens with GPS with these um, tracking apps for your fitness is that if you're near water that can sometimes screw them up. So if you live near a lake or rivers or something like that I often see some incorrect data going on. It could also be that your GPS signal is just bouncing around trying to get a good signal and so it looks like you're moving even though you're not. Um, another app that I like better that you might try it might help is Runtastic Pro. It costs $4.99. It's a one-time fee. I really like it so give that a try. Bob. We got reviews of uh, Runtest Pro, I believe, up right now, we don't do. we? We do, we do, absolutely. Excellent. Let's now, take a look thing? at one cool thing. Yeah, this is, uh, today our one cool thing oh. is the Scotch, Scotch Scotch Rhythm Plus. This is a heart rate monitor that you wear on your arm, and it basically means you don't have to wear those uncomfortable chest straps anymore. We've seen a couple of these heart rate monitors that you can wear on your wrist or on your arm, and it just gets rid of that, that painful discomfort of a chest strap. It's a little bit easier to manipulate once it's on your arm. So this one uses both Ant Plus and Bluetooth technology, which means it's compatible with just about any app or any other device you want to use. Uh, how did it feel? Uh, I mean, I haven't used these kind of devices very much, but it was 
bit, uh, it was a bit tight, but uncomfortable. And it's not like sport watches that have like that sleek, rubberized feel to it. This is Velcro, and this is a little like probably rubberized thingamajig here. Um, it's not uncomfortable, but you know, if, if you're trying to make a fashion statement, this probably isn't the device for you. It sells for $79. The review is up now, and I'll tell you, there's one competing product that I like a whole lot better. So you have to read the review to see which one that is. That's our show for today. We'll see you next time. So long. Thank you.